the What to Read Next podcast helps to build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lauren and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they want for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show is Hi, Deanna. Welcome to What to Read Next podcast. Thanks so much for having me, Laura. So happy to have you here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a sixth generation native Texan, but I've been transplanted to Virginia. So I have like proper winters now. I grew up in South Texas, so snow is not a thing I ever did. And we've got like six inches out on the ground right now. So this is a, this has been an adjustment over the last, God, I think it's been 18, 19 years now that we've been here. So yeah, so I'm a, a transplanted East Coaster. Um, I have written two different Victorian mystery series, as well as some 1920s books, and they have been very well received, which I'm enormously grateful for. And I've got my very first contemporary coming out later this year. Oh my gosh, we got to talk about that. So we absolutely can. (laughs) We got so much to talk about it. So let's chat about, so what about you to start writing some Victorian mysteries as opposed to any other genre? Because it's like a unique niche market that you have cornered. It's so specific. It's so specific. Um, You know, I just, I absolutely love the time period. I graduated from college many, many, many years ago Mm -hmm. um, with a double major in English and history. And because I went to a smaller university that had a really kind of tiny history program, Mm -hmm. um, we were pretty limited in what we were able to study at any given time. Um, And so we tended to study Western European, you know, mm-hmm. what were men doing? It, it was all, it was, it was dude centric is what it was. Mm-hmm. It was, it was pretty white. It was, you know, it, it just didn't tell a really full and nuanced picture of everything that you could imagine that was going on at the time. So once I graduated, I started kind of digging into what women were doing. Um, and one of the time periods I just kind of naturally gravitated towards was the Victorian period because a lot of women were sort of striking out on their own and adventuring around the world. Uh, There were all these great female Victorian explorers and they were doing everything from botany to um, art to archeology. span Some of them were were, doing missionary work, which I wasn't particularly interested in, Mm -hmm. Um, but they were, a lot of them were natural historians, um, which I found really, really fascinating. And, um, you know, my second series actually has a main character who's, uh, who's a natural historian. She's a butterfly hunter. In the the first series that I wrote, um, my main character was an aristocrat because I thought it would be kind of fun to play with um, an aristocrat pushing the boundaries of what would be acceptable behavior for her. Um, and so I've, I've kind of had both sides of the coin with my two different uh, series leads. I have, you know, one woman who's been raised to do things very properly, um, who, you know, there, there are very specific expectations on what her life is supposed to be. And then I have another one who actually earns money for a living which, you know, kind of socially puts her a little bit beyond the pale, even though it's still a really ladylike occupation, she still has to worry about where her next paycheck's coming from. And so that that gives them a very, very different perspective on the world. So I've, I've gotten to write it from both angles, which has been a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I love this. And so how do you incorporate the mystery part? Like does the, the mystery comes first or is it just like, you know, looking at the characters, looking at the setting, what comes first, you know? You know, it, the the thing about writing a mystery that is absolutely glorious is part of the work is kind of done for you once you've chosen to write a mystery because you know it has to be a puzzle structure. Like you understand exactly what the 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 format of it has to be. However much you want to play with it, however much you want to try to subvert it, you know the basis of it is there's going to be a crime of some sort. It's going to be not immediately apparent who did it or why, most likely. Mm-hmm. And your main character is going to have to go and find everything out. And, mm-hmm. and so that kind of gives you a starting point already. And since I have, you know, serious characters, that's already covered also. Like, I know where, you know, I know who I'm dealing with. I know where they're going to be. So then I can incorporate, do I want to push the setting further? Do I want to put them, you know, in a, in a country house um, in, in the middle of the Devonshire Moors? Do I want to put them in an island off the coast of Cornwall? Do I want to, 
you know, take them someplace. Do I want to take them to, to Darjeeling, India? Whatever I want to do with them, I can. Um, and that's where the extra research will come in is who are my secondary characters? You know, are we dealing with a poisoning? Are we dealing with um, another culture that these people might not have been familiar with um, in their own upbringing? So that's when I get to kind of layer in a lot of the, um, the other fun stuff that is unique to that specific book. I love this. And so let's talk about an impossible imposter, which is kind of like a tongue tie. <laughs> I'm starting to say. I anything. know. I but, know. You know, sometimes you see the title written down and you're like, oh, it looks so good. And you don't think about what it's going to be like when you actually have to say it out loud. An impossible imposter. Yeah. It's like one of those um, warm up exercises actors use yeah. before they go on stage. <laughs> um, impossible imposter is number seven in my Veronica Speedwell series. Um, and it's the book that is launching February 15th. Mm -hmm. um very excited about this one it's um there is a, a change of setting this one is set in a country house on the Devonshire Moors which is um it I try to incorporate always some sort of easter egg uh some sort of little homage uh love letter that people who are familiar with like golden age mystery will know you know, where I got that from. Um, in this case, this is, this is a little bit before golden age, because of course it's, it's, you know, uh, a throwback to Hound of the Baskervilles, um, oh. which was the very first, uh, Shakes, uh, uh, very first Sherlock Holmes that I, that I ever read was Hound of the Baskervilles. And I thought the setting was just so perfect. And so it was time to send Veronica to a moor. Um, so she's out on a moor and, um, the crux of this one is, that uh, Veronica is asked to possibly identify um, a young man who was heir to an estate and a fortune and a title and everyone assumed was dead for a couple of years and now has apparently uh, just shown up again and no one knows if he's for real or not but Veronica might know. Ooh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and the mystery ensues. <laughs> So, yes, right. the mystery ensues. <laughs> All right, so a on. chunk of it takes place out on the Devonshire Moors, and then um, we have another chunk of the book that takes place um, in London and, and surrounding areas. I love this. So let's chat about your contemporary release. Tell us all about it. Oh, my contemporary release will be out in September. Um, it follows the adventures of four female assassins who are 60 years old and getting ready to retire from the agency that employs them. And they all have to band together to take out the agency when they realize that they've been targeted themselves. And it is called Killers of a Certain Age. Oh my gosh, I can't wait for this book. First of all, you had me a six-year-old assassin, you know? <laughs> so I, yeah. <laughs> it was so much fun to write. I had a ball with this one. Um, it, it's been happening, you know, off and on for the last two and a half years I've been working on this book and did not finish it until this past November. So I'm, I'm very glad that it's done and I'm very glad that I've done it. And now I just cannot wait to get it out in the world. So that's, uh, that's my September release something to look forward to it this is very exciting so I've been asking this question um for Mr. Authors like we're moving we're still in a pandemic we're still going through we've gone through a couple of years of like really tough time and so wanted to look at what has sparked joy in the midst of all these dark times like is there something that has is, is a hobby is there music writing books whatever it is that had you know kept you kept the light going in the midst of all things oh I love that question um, you know, for me, I, I think like with everybody else, we've all been in the middle of a mental health crisis as well as a physical health crisis. And it's, you know, there are times when you just kind of feel like you're white knuckling through. Um, and I've, I've noticed for myself processing a lot of those feelings, there have been certain books that have really, really helped with that. And um, Maggie Smith's poetry has been, you know, phenomenal. Um, one book that I found just really moving and joyful was Becoming Duchess Goldblatt. Um, Duchess Goldblatt is a fictional character um, who exists only on Twitter. Um, she has just this delightfully snarky persona and she, but she's, she's a hundred parts fantasy. She's just 
uh, larger than life and truly lovely. And I adore her. I've followed her for years. And finally, the, and I still don't know who is actually behind the account. Um, <laughs> yeah, and the, the person who is behind the account managed to publish uh, the story of how they came to be Duchess Goldblatt and without ever giving away their actual real life identity. And I think there's something just so sweetly magical about that. And you know, that the, the whole character of Duchess Goldblatt is just so ridiculous and um, funny and, you know, warm and sassy and, you know, acerbic all at the same time. And I just, I'm always a happier person for my paths having crossed the duchesses one day on, on, on Twitter, you know, if she happens to be active at the same time I am and we chat for a minute. So getting kind of the behind the scenes peek at how that persona was created was just really, really sweet. And um, there's, there's a lot of emotion behind why the character was created. And I just, I loved it. And it was, it was escapist, but also really like I cried and it was very cathartic and I loved that. So because sometimes you just need a, a, a good wet weep. I love this good find on the internet. I did not know the Duchess Goldblatt existed. So now I'm like going to go look for her. So you absolutely have to, she's amazing. And she's, she's got this, this, um, Kind of platonic love affair going with Lyle Lovett and <laughs> like he tweets at her and it's just it's hilarious he followed me because I'm a friend of Duchess Goldblatt so I'm like this is a very you know six degrees of separation type thing now now I'm only you know it, it's bizarre and adorable and your life will be richer for encountering Duchess Goldblatt I promise you Laura I love this thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> speaking of which um books do you have any books you recommend our listeners to pick up Oh my gosh, yes. I've got a nice long list, so buckle up. Yes. Um, <laughs> so depending on what you're in the mood for, I, I loved this question because I decided to kind of go all across the board with all different kinds of books, just things that I've really loved over the last couple of years. One of the things that I've been working on is um, doing anti-racism work. And so Idioma Luo's book, uh, So You Want to Talk About Race, is a phenomenal place to start. It's just, it's very conversational. Um, some books that talk about race, they, they do it in a very academic way. There's a lot of discussion of studies and psychology. Idioma's book is much more, okay, we're going to sit down and I'm going to tell you person to person why this is important. And it just, it was so readable and just so many things just clicked into place when I read it. It, it kind of has laid the foundation for further work in a, in a really great way. Um, I absolutely loved Madeline Miller's Circe, mm -hmm. um, which is a retelling of the, uh, the Greek mythology around Circe, who is, um, she's a, de uh, a descendant of the gods. She's the, the sorceress who um, turns men to pigs when they come onto her island. And it's just, it is such a glory. The language is so lush mm -hmm. and just, you absolutely feel like you're there. It is, it is pure magic. So if you want some Greek island escapism, it, it, is, it is absolutely like the bomb. Um, Oyen Khan Braithwaite's My Sister, the Serial Killer. Mm -hmm. I went many, many years without reading thrillers. And then a couple of years ago, I went on vacation. It was a beach vacation. I said, okay, I'm on a beach. No one can get me. I don't have to be scared. I can read thrillers here. So I brought a big stack of thrillers. And um, Oyen Khan Braithwaite's book just blew me away. I read it in one sitting and it was absolutely phenomenal. If you're not familiar with her work, she's a Nigerian writer. And it is just, it's this pitch perfect um, examination of what your life would be like if your sister also just happened to, you know, casually be a serial killer. Um, and I just, I thought it was phenomenal. Um, I loved last year, there was a, a fantastic cozy mystery that came out called Dial A for Aunties mm -hmm. by Jesse Q. Sutanto. Um, and so it's very much kind of your, your typical cozy mystery. Mm -hmm. except there's this massive Singaporean Indonesian family and all of the main characters aunts get involved when she goes on a blind date and apparently her date just drops dead and so they have to spend the whole time trying to help her hide the body and it's just it's a comedy of errors and I understand it's being made into a film for Netflix and I am beyond excited about that and the sequel to it I think is just getting ready to drop which is four aunties and a okay. wedding yep yeah, I'm very excited about that. 
And then um, because I am myself a woman of a certain age, um, I have absolutely loved, I'm not quite finished with it yet, but I'm almost there. Um, Kelly Doust wrote a book called The Power Age, which is about um, aging and kind of just a badass, you know, enormously optimistic, powerful kind of way. And I think if you, I mean, for me, because I'm going to be 54 this year, it, it's been really, really fantastic in helping me um, just to think about age in a completely different way. But I think if you're in your thirties and you're starting to panic about getting like, read this book now, mm -hmm. because you will have nothing but joy going forward at the idea that, oh, you're going to get older and you're going to be this, this fantastic self-actualized, mm -hmm. you know, feet on the ground, wings in the air kind of human being. It's just, it's, it, it use age in a completely different way. And there are lots of great little snippets of interviews with women who are in their fifties, in their sixties, in their seventies, and they're doing things like traveling the world or starting nonprofits or, you know, having fantastic sex lives. And, and so they're, they're setting these great examples for what life can be like when, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with the idea that things don't necessarily end when you're 45. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I so when it's like in my I just start turn 40. I have to say I'm enjoying this like getting older part of it and trying to trying to, to find like I have a great life because I'm older, you know. Exactly. You know, you get all of that experience and you get the wisdom coming in. And yeah. honestly, the older I got, the more my give a shitter breaks. And I just <laughs> like not caring what people think anymore because you're like no I'm sorry it takes so much energy it takes so much energy to care what people think I'm and just you, over it and to be honest people don't think about you that much you know what exactly. I mean you're so exactly. about and they're like we don't even worry about you, <laughs> you <know>? exactly <laughs> and it's very liberating it's very very liberating yeah. So those are a lot of my favorites that I've read yeah. within the last couple of years. I love this. I'm reading for Auntie's and a Wedding, and it's hilarious. Oh, it's I'm so jealous. Oxford, it's set in Oxford, and there's a mafia, you know. Oh, totally my God. Today. It's so I good. cannot wait. Okay, so I'm going to clear out my entire calendar the day it drops, yes. because I know what I'm going to be doing. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes, you have to. It's like, you must have to. So, and I have to admit, my serious story of serial killer was just, like, delightful. It was just, like, the perfect perfect teaser of like a great book that hit the mark in a concise way so fantastic yeah tell us how you can connect with me online oh I am on Instagram uh I don't post as often as I should simply because I forget to take pictures um but I do post um a couple times a week on Instagram but I am on Twitter all the time I love me some Twitter um you can also find me uh at my website DeannaRaven.com. if uh you want any more information there's all sorts of good stuff about the books on there um and announcements because I've got some events coming up but Twitter is always the best place to find me thank you Deanna for being on the show thank you so much if you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. Today's episode's partner is Libra FM. If you're an audiobook listener, then you should add Libra FM as your go-to source for paid audiobooks. Libra FM makes it possible for you to buy audiobooks to your local bookstore. Memberships start at $14.95, and they also have great sales for women's audiobooks each month for $3.99, thanks to the Kiss Club. To sign up for Libra FM, please visit whattoreadnextblog.com slash Libra FM. You will receive a free audiobook when you sign up for a monthly subscription. If you purchase a subscription through our link, you will be supporting the podcast at no cost to you. The What to Read Next podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Please visit frolic.media slash podcast to discover new shows to tune in. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.